Hey guys, this is Joelle of From Scratch Farmstead and today I wanted to share with you my personal story of how I overcame um, hypothalamic amenorrhea um, and went on to have three healthy, happy pregnancies and babies. Just a disclaimer here, I am not a doctor, this is not medical advice or anything like that. Um, this is just my own personal story and my own personal experience. And so I remember when I was in the thick of going through um, hypothalamic amenorrhea and infertility and all of these things, I was just scouring the internet for anything I could find on people's experiences with this and stories and forums and all of that and I was finding such little information and so my hope in sharing this is just to be um, a source of encouragement to you that you can overcome hypothalamic amenorrhea and go on to be really healthy and have healthy pregnancies and healthy babies and it is possible. Um, and so my story, so I guess to start, what is hypothalamic amenorrhea? So hypothalamic amenorrhea is basically when your body shuts off menstruation and your fertility because of stress to the body. And normally this is stress in terms of energy deficit from under eating or eating disorders or over exercising. A lot of people with hypothalamic amenorrhea tend to be um, endurance athletes, extreme runners or dancers, um, things like that. People with eating disorders are, um, are eating, just under eating, or it could also be psychological stressors and people just under extreme stress. When you're in these sort of conditions, your body, the first thing, one of the first functions that it's going to shut off is your fertility because it thinks your body is smart and it knows you're in too much stress to have a baby right now. That would not be a good thing for you. So your body in its wisdom is gonna shut off that function um, to keep you alive, but not have you reproduce. And so for me, that, that was my story to a T. And so I was an endurance runner. I ran cross country in high school and I went on to run marathons in college. Um, I stopped getting my period when I started cross country when I was around 15 and that continued until I was about 25 and so and also during this time I, I did not eat very much. Um, I probably ate a thousand to maybe 1500 calories a day and it was very low fat, fat free, low fat yogurt, turkey sandwiches, um, just not enough to sustain and support my body and especially with all of the running that I was doing. So I would run at least an hour every day. I loved it, I loved to run, um, but I also was obsessed with it and I was obsessed with um, just my appearance and being really thin. And so before I started running and losing weight and things, I would say my healthy weight, I'm 5'5", five five, I weighed about 125 pounds, and that was, yeah, a healthy, happy weight for my body. Um, but then when I started running and under eating, I dropped down to anywhere between like 100 and 110 pounds, and I stayed there for about 10 years. Um, and my body just, that whole time, that 10 years, um, yeah, I stopped cycling and my body was just pretty much in starvation mode. And so, and it was just in really stressed mode. Um, I also, I guess when I was about 18, was put on the birth control pill to get a cycle back, um, but there really was no attention paid to my diet or exercising or any of those things. And so I lived with it. I think I, I was able to justify it in my head because I thought, this is healthy, right? Like you're eating healthy, low fat, these are good things, exercise, really good things, I'm, I'm being healthy. And everyone told me how healthy I was and, and things like that, but I knew in my gut this, this wasn't sustainable, this really wasn't healthy, but I did it anyway. Um, and so, yeah, so that was about those 10 years for me. And 
when I was a senior, or I guess when I was a junior in college, I met my now husband, um, and we got married just after I graduated from college, so I was 22, and I knew I would love to start a family at some point, and I knew that with my current habits and where I was at, that wasn't going to be possible. Um, so I kind of put it off for a while, those first few years, and didn't really think about it, um, but then couple years into our marriage, I, yeah, I knew that I would need to make a change. And so I went, step one, I got off the birth control pill. And lo and behold, nothing happened. My cycle didn't come back. I was still running, I would say, at least an hour every day at this point. Um, I had run marathons and been running marathons regularly. Um, and so, yeah, my cycle didn't come back. And so I knew that I was going to need to make more drastic changes. Uh, around this time as well, a trusted friend told me, um, you know, I think that it would be a really good idea for you to eat real foods. Or she described them to me as an anti-inflammatory diet. So basically eating real, whole, unprocessed foods and said, you know, your body just, these these are healthy foods. And so drop the low-fat, low-calorie, processed food thing, the turkey sandwiches, the non-fat yogurt, things like that, and eat real, whole food in a way that um, people have always been eating it for centuries and centuries and centuries before us, before processed food came into being. And so when she... When she talked to me about that and I thought about it, I thought, huh, like that, that makes a lot of sense. People haven't been eating low-fat, non-fat yogurt. People have been eating, I don't know, milk from a cow. Like that's, that's what's been happening for centuries. Um, this processed food world is all relatively new. So if I go back to how people had been eating for generations before me and eating fresh vegetables and meats and nuts and seeds and things that, that people could hunt and gather that I, I would be nourishing my body. And I think my biggest fear in, in all of this was that all of a sudden I was going to balloon from 100 pounds to obesity and that I was going to go from one extreme to the other by stopping my ways. And if I stopped running, I was going to get fat essentially. And that was what I was terrified of. Absolutely terrified. And so I, I didn't want that to happen. But when she talked to me about that, I thought, huh, like if I only put really good, nourishing, healthy foods into my body, there's no way that my body is going to balloon up to obesity. Like it just made sense to me that my body would do what it needed to do. And frankly, at this point, I was so motivated to get pregnant and to have a baby and for that to be true of our family that, um, yeah, I was motivated to do the work that it took. And so, so pretty much cold turkey, I stopped running one day and I haven't really started since. Um, so I stopped running. I switched. I still walked most days. I just, that was good for me, good for my mental health. I love being outside and moving my body, but I couldn't do the running. And so I switched to, to walking and I just, I changed my diet completely. I took out the processed foods that I was eating. I took out things that came in packages and especially all that low fat, non fat stuff. Um, and I replaced it with real whole nourishing foods. I replaced it with meat and eggs and vegetables and, and all of these things. And let me tell you, it, it took some time. Those first few weeks, um, my body like was going through, I don't know, it was screaming at me and it was not so fun. I ate really big salads and my stomach was like, what are you doing to me? But, um, but I kept doing it and I pushed through and eventually my body got used to it and really started craving those foods. Um, and it, it took time. But let's see, this was in 2012, I believe, that I stopped running and I started doing this. And um, it took a few months 
for the, the me to start gaining back that weight, but after stopping running and changing how we were eating, and at this point I didn't, I didn't count calories, I didn't count macros, I didn't do any of those things, I just ate, and I enjoyed food, and I ate until my body genuinely felt full. Um, and I, I ate a lot, my, my body had been so undernourished and underfed for so long that my appetite was really pretty huge and I and I fed it and I ate a lot. And so in that first year, I went from being 100 to 105 pounds to like 135 pounds to 140 pounds, I think was about where I was at my most. Um, and that took place over that first year. So I gained, yeah, like 30 to 40 pounds in a year. And it was, it was so, so hard. <laughs> Um, I, I had to get rid of pretty much all of the clothing that I owned and I went to the thrift store several times as I went up a size and then went up another size and then went up another size. Um, and I had to go to the thrift store several times and re put together my wardrobe to find things that I felt comfortable in. But, but I was motivated and I, yeah. It was really, it was neat to see the changes happening in my body um, while I was gaining weight. I could see signs of life and signs of health come back into my body. So where I previously felt cold all the time and my hair was starting to thin out um, and I would even get night sweats um, because of my low estrogen levels, I would get, it was like I was in menopause almost and I would get these terrible I would wake up sweating at night, um, and I was really pretty just, I don't think I realized it, but just pretty depressed and anxious and, um, yeah, battling a lot of those sort of feelings. And so for the first time in that period, while it was so, so hard and gaining all of that weight was so, so hard, it was also really, really good. Um, and that I, I finally, I was able to laugh again and I found a lot of joy in life. Um, I wasn't cold all the time and I wasn't always shivering and had blue lips like I was previously. I didn't get those night sweats. My hair was finally coming in really nice and thick again. There were so many positive signs and that kept me motivated and kept me going. Um, and it took, it took me getting to that 135-ish pounds before my cycle even returned. And so everyone's story is going to be different. My story is not going to be your story, is not going to be someone else's story. Everyone's body is different. But for me, my body needed to get above kind of that natural normal set point that I was at prior um, in order to really start trusting me again and to know that it is safe and that it it can be capable of carrying another of a, another life, another human being, getting pregnant. Um, and so it took a full year and 30 plus pounds, but about a year after I stopped running, changed what I ate and how much I ate, um, my cycle did return. Um, and so for me, it, it wasn't, that wasn't the end of the story. Um, it took a, another full year of having a pretty regular cycle um, for me to get pregnant. And so, so from when I started, it took one year for me to begin having a cycle and then another full year of having a cycle for me to get pregnant. Now, I have to say for me personally, during that year, we went through some major changes of moving and transitioning between, yeah, pretty, there, there was a lot of stress in there. So the process definitely could have been slower for me because of some external factors. Um, but it took two full years and then two years after we started, I got pregnant. Um, but I, I miscarried that baby pretty quickly. And so I feel like at that point, my body had done so much healing, but it still wasn't, wasn't quite there. I had, I had done 10 years of, um, yeah, just treating my body really pretty badly, and it, it took time to recover from that. And so, 
So I lost that baby to a miscarriage. And at that point, my husband and I decided we just need to take a break from all this. Um, I was I was pretty focused on wanting to get pregnant and pretty obsessed about wanting to have a baby. That that was that was a big source of mental stress for me. And so we took after that um, miscarriage, we took a year where we just decided. We're not going to worry about this. Um, I, I made my goal to really just focus on nourishing my body as best as I could and to have a lot of fun with my husband and to just enjoy life and to not worry about getting pregnant and, and frankly not even try to get pregnant um, and just nourish my body, get as healthy as I possibly could so that when in the future we did decide to try again to have a baby, my body would be at the healthiest spot it could be to bring a really healthy baby into this world. And so that's what we did for another year. And then about a year later, we decided, okay, let's try this again. And we got pregnant on our very first go around. Um, and yeah, have a super healthy, happy, lovely um, almost six-year-old baby girl now and so that has been my journey and then since since that time I've had two more pregnancies successful pregnancies and healthy babies um, since then and so yeah so that is what my journey looked like um, I think one of the biggest things that I learned along the way so yeah so I guess if I back up here um, during that time of nourishing my body and waiting and gaining weight and all of those things. I went and I I went to lots of doctors. Um, I went to conventional OBGYNs, reproductive endocrinologists, um, midwives, lots of different doctors and lots of different arenas. And no one, none of the doctors that I saw really listened to me. Um, and now they're yeah, there are great doctors out there. Not that these doctors weren't great, but they they did not understand where I was coming from or what I was going through, and they didn't listen. Um, I was told I had PCOS. I was told to take Clomid. I was told, oh, we could get you pregnant with IVF. And and not that there's anything wrong with those things. There's there's not anything wrong with those things. But for me, I I knew in my my gut what the problem was, and I knew that it was capable for my body to get pregnant naturally, um, and I was just asking for help and support in that. But but those yeah those those people didn't didn't see things quite the same way or really listen to me. They just wanted me to take a pill, solve my problem, and move forward. And so I learned during that time that that it was I needed to be my own advocate. And um, I needed to, yeah, stand stand up for myself. And if a doctor wasn't kind of on board with that, I knew that that's not where my dollars and my time were going to go. And I moved on. Um, and so eventually, after seeing a number of doctors and having a lot of really frustrating experiences and crying a lot, um, I did find a integrative doctor who did a blend of Eastern and Western medicine. And he was awesome and he listened to me and he worked with me and he helped me develop a plan and I went on some different supplements that were really helpful. Um, and really I think the biggest thing that he did was he gave me encouragement and hope and support and someone that I could, yeah, like I could see improvement when he did lab tests and I could see my markers and my hormone levels getting better and it was just really helpful for me at that point in my journey to have someone that was working with me towards a goal and helping me get there. And so that was really, really huge for me. And so I saw him probably in those like last two years of my journey between having like before having a miscarriage and then kind of in that year before um, getting pregnant with my daughter. Um, yeah, and so that that is my story. Going from being really underweight, over-exercising, and really just generally unhealthy um, to being in really, really robust health. Um, and I'm so, so thankful for that journey. And ultimately, kind of that, that changing what we ate ended up being huge for both my husband and I. My husband 
also went through a number of positive health changes as we changed our diet and was able to get rid of things like seasonal allergies and, and some of the things that he struggled with as well. And actually, eventually through um, starting to eat real food, we kind of went down this homesteading path and now currently are um, have a farmstead and homestead here and grow tons of food. And it's just been really the biggest blessing that I, I could have asked for. While those years were so, so, so hard, so hard, I can't even tell you. Those were the most challenging years of my life. I cried a lot. Um, it, it's, it was so worth it. Um, and I would never change what I learned from that time and how I grew as a person and where it brought us, my husband and I, and us as a family to where we are now. And so I just want to encourage you, wherever you are in your journey, that it is possible and it is worth it. Yeah, so that's, that's my story. Um, I hope it provides you some hope, some encouragement that it is possible, it is worth it, you can do it. Your body is amazing and wants to heal um, and is totally capable of healing. Um, so feel free, if this is you, if this is your story, drop a comment below if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you if you are in a place where you're working through this and going through this. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today and we'll see you next time.